Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the session. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good evening. Yes, sir. You're audible. Good evening. Okay, fine. All right. Okay, so uh, all right. So we'll continue with uh, where we stopped in the last session. All right. So uh, basically, what we saw till now is uh, creating or establishing models with the help of uh, with the help of Flask SQL Alchemy and uh, uh, how do we, you know, create a, the database actually, and then configure it with an application? All right. Uh, and we also saw how to interact with the database with the help of CLI. So basically, we ran Python till now, but uh, that Python that we use was a part of command line interface. All right, because we did not have any interface to actually deal with the database. All right. So now we'll try to create our interface of our own, that is the application with the help of Flask. All right. So I hope we have gone through. The, the the videos that we have already taken all right uh, you got acquainted with uh, the things that we have covered yet all right and um, you have the code base because that was shared in the supplementary content so we'll be continuing with the same code base and we'll share it to you uh, after the session all right okay. the exact same right the week five activity session yes week five activity session and uh, uh, the yes, last one, the modifications which we did. Yes. So these are the two building. sessions, right? Okay. So basically we have co covered two sessions uh, till now. Okay. And uh, this will be the, the third and probably the last one. Okay. So I see that there are students joining from outside. Please, uh, can you join with your own uh, ID unless it is uh, uh, BTEC ID. Okay. Please join with your student, uh, ds.student ID unless it is a B tech ID. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Before we start, uh, I was watching the week five activity session, and around hmm. uh, fifteen minutes of the video has not been filmed properly. Uh, why is that? Uh, I'm not sure. Even the time at the bottom of your screen is frozen. Uh, maybe because that was, I was having some uh, network issues then, but then I continued. I mean, I continued where it was, uh, I mean, I stuck. So your audio was visible though. I mean, your audio, uh, we could hear it, but then uh, not the uh, screencast part. Oh, is it? Okay. So what we'll do is, uh, if that is the, if that is the issue with uh, the YouTube video, we will, uh, we will share you the recorded session. Okay, and uh, we will update the video with the recorded one. Okay. But sir, that so was that... the recorded one, right? The one on YouTube? No, no, no. So that was public streaming, right? Yes. So basically what happens is when this session, for example, now, so you can see that this session is uh, publicly uh, available on the YouTube, that is live session as well as this session is recorded. All right. So uh, what the session which was streamed publicly becomes a part of YouTube video. Apart from that, we also have a recorded version of it. OK, sir. So that will All be right. approved. So we will, uh, I'll, I'll just go through the video of YouTube. I didn't get the chance to uh, to go through the YouTube video. Uh, just give, can you put the timestamp here? <laughs> uh, I mean, where I got stuck, because it will be easier for me. So wherever, yeah, it's 115, is it? Okay. So I will uh, go through that part and see how much of it is stuck. Then uh, if it, re if it, uh, I mean, if there is something really missing there, then we will replace the video. 139, 15 minutes approx. Okay. Uh, 15, no, it's 25, is it? 24, 25 minutes. Okay, fine. We'll see. Okay, so there was a network issue then. So maybe because of that, I had to reconnect and maybe uh, that has happened. Okay, so we'll replace it with the recorded one. Uh, no, uh, it will happen in, you know, in, uh, in a day or two. Okay, we'll try, try to do it uh, along with this third part of the video. Sir, can All you right. also uh, get some uh, extension on the week six deadline? Lab assignment. Week six deadline has already been extended. Already done. Ninth. Already done. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so deadline is ninth now. Sir, it will help a lot. Okay, fine. 
Okay then. So shall we continue? I'll share my screen. You can also open wherever you're you're working, whether it is Replit or VS Code. Okay. So where am I? Week five, all right? Yeah, so I have already added these two part of the video. I mean, the uh, week five SWI underscore zero and underscore one is just the extension. We'll also have the third part that is underscore two that will involve everything, okay? The entire code base. So we'll continue with this. How do we do that? We'll open it uh, very quickly in, in, we'll open the CMD and also the VS code. All right, so this is our app.py file. All right, this is a database which will not work in VS code. This is model.py and the explanation is whatever we discuss uh, right okay so sim simultaneously i'll also open the database in db browser i think this is the one okay item and material all right so there are four items let's let let them be there uh, so till now we were interacting with this database either on directly the DB browser or through the command line interface. Why was that? Because we it's we ourselves did not have any interface to deal with it directly. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll try to create an interface. So basically that will be the web app that we are going to create with the help of Flask. All right. So uh, currently we will uh, we will we we have this app.py right. So here this is where we'll start creating our controllers. So what do we have to do basically? We need to create one controller. One controller has to be created to list out all the uh, all the materials available. Right, materials available in the database. Basically, what we will be doing is uh, establishing CRUD functionality right c r u t the create read update and delete for uh, the material and item okay so available is right? something wrong with this yeah okay so this is the first thing that we are going to create list out all the materials that are available in the db all right then the second thing would be to be able to create a new material that is add a new material to the database Okay. Then the third thing would be to update, right? To update, update any particular material. Okay. And then finally delete. And we delete material. So what do we want? Uh, what what we want here is. Uh, on the application, so let's say this is my application. This will happen. The, the application will run here, right, on my browser. So let's say if I this is the screen of my application, on the top left, wherever I want. But uh, I mean, in general, simple HTML, it will be on the top left, right. So in the top left, I want the list of all the products. Uh, sorry, all the materials that are available, and along with uh, and they should be a part of uh, or they should be the a uh, row of the table. All right. I think we are trying to, you know, make it as similar as a lab assignment. All right. So every material should be a row in the table and then there should be option for each material. What are those options? Either you can update it or delete it. All right. So when I click on update button, I should be redirected to the update page and delete should delete the item and uh, I should uh, see that vanishing from the page. All right. Because that's what delete means, right? You delete and it's gone. So this is what uh, I mean, currently we are trying to create along with this list. We should also have a button or let's say a link, which will, uh, when I click on that link, it should take me to a create uh, page, right? Creating a material page. So whatever we did with the uh, command line now will have an interface. 
okay and how do we interact with an uh, with the with the application with the help of form so any data that we are putting in in the application will happen through form okay so i hope you are getting what we are trying to do but at the at the start what do we see on the front page we should see all the listed materials in the database so let us try to code that okay and while we code everything that we saw till now in the command line all the commands that i was trying to put there uh, in the python shell we will try to use uh, one of those right so many of those mostly all of those will be used but at different places all right so i'll start coding here in this part okay how do we add a controller so it is added with app dot route okay this is where we define what should be the end point where everything is listed right so uh, let us do it on the uh, home page itself so as soon as the application gets rendered on the base url itself we'll see the list of all the materials available in the database all right uh, and we are talking about only one method that is get because what is what what are we trying to do with this page simply retrieve all the data that is there in the database so we don't need to even uh, you know give the methods right so why why is that because the default method in the flask as well as in the browser is get so you don't need to mention text basically okay wherever it is required will okay then it will be uh, mapped with a function this is called as view function right so all materials this is a function does not take any argument now now we will try to relate it with what we did in the command line interface okay so now uh, tell me how do we retrieve all the materials in the uh, from the database right so we will query the the uh, the required or the respective class for that right so let's say i create a, a variable called all mats right standing for all materials okay and to get the list of all the materials how would I, what will i do i will query the material table so it will be material dot query dot all okay so this is python whatever we did in the cli was python because we coded in python shell the only difference is this will i mean this line of code line number 13 will run only when this function is triggered right but there it was line by line right the moment you hit enter that line gets triggered or that gets the line gets uh, compiled by the python compiler okay so now in all mats i have the list of objects right because it will be retrieving all the records what do i mean by record object in uh, flask sql alchemy so since it will be retrieving all the records let us uh, uh, let us try to send them in the front end now because the data is has now come to the controller from the database all right and the connection is already done right so we don't have to worry about whether it is connected or not it is already connected now whatever we were doing with command line interface now will be done by the controllers right so here the uh, all the materials all the material records are retrieved from the database now the next thing that we do is send it to the template so how do we send it to the template we'll use we'll return and then we will render template all right render template and what are we going to render let's say all underscore materials dot html we do not have this uh, html as of now but we'll create it right and how do you send the data so this is how you send the data all max equals to all max i mean i'll be using both so this variable is a part of jinja and this is this right line number 13 so the right hand side of this equals to refers to line number 13 all right and the left hand side re refers to a variable that i'm going to directly use in jinja all right so that's all all right now let us try to create the the all materials dot html all right so here in templates folder i just uh, select the templates folder and i'll create a new html file what was that all materials and all underscore materials materials dot html okay uh, for every html i'll be very quickly using this boilerplate all right if this doesn't come in your vs code leave it what you need is doc type declaration and html obviously we're using language english so we don't even have to provide that all right you need an html tag you need a head tag you need a body tag that's all, all right i'll be changing the title to all materials all materials all right now in the body tag what i'll have to do first let us see if it is 
everything is getting connected okay so what i'll do is i will simply print all materials what was the variable that i uh, listed there it was all mats all right will this work tell me will this uh, uh, i mean can all will all the material be printed here no sir no no sir okay why is that this will not consider it as a variable we'll just consider this as a string curly brackets yes right so here i'm just writing uh, all mat what does that mean how will html render it just the simple text it text. does not understand it is uh, whether it is a variable in uh, you know python or not how do i make sure that it is a variable that i want to render i'll make use of jinja right so this may, why is this so many uh, all right so this double curly braces that i'm writing in line number 9 helps html to understand that okay this all match is basically a variable that is coming from python which needs to be uh, rendered here okay so let us save this and try to see if this is linked all right so we will uh, save everything and now we will not be going to that template Sorry, this uh, command line opening Python shell, nothing will do. Now what we'll Should do we is we'll import see... anything extra in the app. Yes, we will have to import render template. Thanks for reminding because we have used the render template. Yeah, because it is not. Related. Yes, it would have anyway shown error, so we would have uh, anyway done yes. that. But yeah, thanks for reminding. Render template is a method which is defined in Flask, so we have imported. It. Okay. Uh, and what's the request method, sir? Request. Where is request? Uh, we are yet to come to that. See, currently, what we have done is we have sent a request of, uh, with no body as such. Okay, so request will only be used if the request sent has a body. Okay, currently we are only making a request to the base URL, and what does base URL does? It triggers this function. What does this function does? It retrieves all the material from the database. So you get a list of objects, and what is this happening in line number fourteen? We are simply rendering it uh, with the help of this HTML file, right? And what is there in the this HTML index.html close? What is there in this all material HTML file? Simply whatever you have dumped in the HTML is rendered here. That's all. Yes. Okay. You got the got the thing. Yes. Okay. So now, now that we uh, now we are using web application, we are using Flask. We will re, uh, we will start the server. All right. How do we do that? So you we will open. have to use the virtual uh, environment, right? Yeah, 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 I'll have to use it because the flask okay. and everything is there, right? So first, mm -hmm. I have to activate the virtual environment, then run my application. Okay, so what will I do? I'll first uh, activate my virtual environment. It was my env uh, slash scripts slash activate. Okay, so this activates my virtual environment, meaning now you are working in an environment where all the modules that are used in the project are there, installed. So you don't have to worry about installing them explicitly. Okay, now my app, uh, virtual environment is activated. How do I run my application? Simply do the command python app.py. Okay, so initially what we were doing, we are opening python shell. Now what we are doing, we are running this particular model with python. Yeah, so you can see that my application is now running. The debug mode is on because we did debug equals to true. Okay, and then now we will try to render this uh, or go to this particular URL. Right, so what do I get? I get the materials as objects. Okay, because what did we retrieve? We retrieved list of objects. All right, now to give it a better look, let us now work with this. All right, so what I'll do is I'll go back to my HTML. Okay, and instead of directly writing all mats, let us try to uh, create, uh, let us try to print only the name of this uh, materials with the help of Jinja. All right, now what I want to do is I want to uh, print the name of this material as H1, right? H1 material 1, H1 material 2, and the names of material. So, how do I do that? And for using H1, what will I have to do? I'll have to iterate through each and every item of the list, right? So basically, I'll just show you what we are talking about. So currently, when we did material.query.all, what do I have? I have a list of 
objects, right? Material space one, something like this. Material space two. All right. So I have a list of objects and nothing else. What will I? What What do I want to do now? I want these the names of that material, the actual names in the database of those materials to get printed one below the other as H1. So what do I want in the HTML? It should take something like this. H1, name one, okay, slash H1. Okay, and similarly, H1, name two, H1, something like this. Okay, so what does this mean? If I want to do this for each and every item in the material, I'll have to iterate through each and every item. Right, each but item meaning each and every item of the list, okay, not that item model. Okay, so if I want to iterate through each and every entry of the list, what will I do? I'll have to run a for loop. All right, and how do we run a for loop in Py in Jinja? Let us go to that and see. So I'll write single curly braces and percentage sign, then write for okay, for let's say entry in all maps because all maps is a list. So I can iterate through it. I'm not sure if this is correct. All material. O A double L. Okay. So for entry in all maps, then what do I have to print? I want to print. Now for every entry, what will this represent actually? I'm iterating through every entry of all material. What will this uh, refer to? Uh, material object. object. Object, right? So how do I write the name of this? Uh, how to how do I retrieve the name of this particular entry? dot name entry entry dot, dot name. name entry dot name that's all okay so it coding becomes easier if you know what exactly is this entry what exactly is all max right so entry dot name but will it play print entry dot name i want to i need to tell jinja no you have to take this as a variable and print the actual value of it that's all all right but what did i say i want this to be a part of h1 then I will put it in H1. Okay. And then once you are done with this, you need to tell the HTML or Jinja that I'm done with my for loop, end it. So what will I do? I'll write and for okay. Any issue in this code? No. All right, so we're done. So let us save this and see. So my application is still running. While my application is still running, I don't need to rerun it again. I just need to reload my page. And you can see that the change has, uh, you know, changes incorporated. Okay, my, while my application was still running, I did not have to restart it, right? And I did not make any change in the app.py. The server will restart only when I make changes in app.py. The server will not restart if I make change in templates. All right. So whatever I did here will not cause any issue to the server unless there is an error. Okay. But now uh, there won't be any error. So what I what I did, the application was still running. I just reloaded it. Okay. So what I got was the the names. So you can see that the data that was stored in the database now with the help of controllers are now coming to the view. Okay. And what, who is doing that? The view function. That is why we call this as controller. Okay. So it is querying the database. Okay. And sending it to querying the database in line number 13 and sending it to uh, view in line number 14. That's all it does. All right. Now between this query and between this sending the data to the model, there can be a lot of code in between. Okay, this lot of code in between is actually called as business logic. Okay, for this controller, we do not need anything else. So that's all. All right, but what did I say now? So let us move on. What did I say here? Uh, I mean, while starting off, what did I say? How should my application look? It should have all the listed materials as rows of a table, right? So we will change the template according to that. All right, so what I'll do now is here, I'll write an H1, which gives me all materials in inventory okay something fancy we're writing okay just an heading and this should now become a, a table a row in the table so what will we do we will create a table tag 
right? Table time. Let me just leave it. I'll just write it from the scratch. So we need a table tag. What are the two things of table? Uh, there is T head and T body. We don't need T head and T body, but there is something called as TH and TR. All right. So TH represents the heading of the table where you, you know, uh, write the columns of the, uh, write the name of the columns and TR actually represents every row of the table. All right. So first let us mention what is TH. Okay. So TH will first will be serial number, serial number. Serial number. Okay. And what will be the other TH? Other TH will be name. Okay. And the third TH that I'm going to write is action. Why is that? I mean, if you have a sample of your lab assignment, we'll see in the action action column, there are two buttons called as update and delete. Right. So that's what we are going to have here. All right. So this is my header. Yes, These are my headers of the table. Uh, sir, we will need TR directly. Sorry, I uh, did not get. Uh, we will need TR tag. Sorry? TR tag. TR tag before using uh, TH tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come to that. Yeah, I'll come to that. So what I'm saying is basically, I mean, in the table, there are this, there is something called as P head. Okay. And P body, which separates out the table heading from the table body okay but in modern i mean in html5 we don't really need to do that how do we differentiate the heading with the column we just have to write pr okay pr okay and everything that we write in pr is this right so this is how we write the pr what, what does this mean there is the first row of your table which actually represents the headers of your table Okay, this is what we mean. So I'll just uh, shift it uh, to the right just to show that it is a part of TL. Okay, so in any table that you see, the first row is actually the headers, right? So the first TR is uh, called the headers. And that is why you can see that this is TH, TH. What is in the next rows, next uh, 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 continuous rows after T, uh, T, uh, TH? We see the actual data, right? So that will be represented by TD. Okay, so that we'll see now how to add that. I hope you understood this TR. So currently my table is having uh, this TR. Okay, for now what I'll do, I'll just uh, comment this. Okay, and see that if this is working fine. All right, so I'll just save this. And as I said, we are not making any change in app.py. We are only changing the HTML. What we'll see here, you just have to reload. Okay, so now you can see that. All materials in inventory. That was the H1 that I've added, and you can see that these are the three, uh, you know, table headers that we have added: serial number, name, and action. All right. Now everything that we are writing below this will actually be the data, actual data of the table. And for that, we'll have to use for loop. Okay. There will be only one header for the table. I was sure about that. I mean, everyone is sure that there will be only one header of the table. Therefore, we are using one row. That's all. But what about the actual data? How many rows are there? On what will that depend? That will depend on actual entries in the database. And nobody knows that. How many entries are there in the database? First thing. Second thing, it is dynamic. It keeps on changing. So therefore, for that, we'll have to run the for loop. Okay. So you can basically see that we are running for loop to actually iterate through, doesn't matter how many, all the rows of the table. All right. So that is where the for loop comes into picture, when you just have to iterate. Okay, but now I don't want this to be H1. I want these to be the entries of my table. Okay, so the entries of the table is defined by, again, I'm creating one row, TR. So this new row is represented by TR. Okay, and what will I write in between the actual content of the table? And that is represented by TD, data, right? So headers are represented by TH. The data is represented by TD. Okay. The first is serial number. Okay. So, I mean, what do we put as serial number for now? Let us, let us leave it as is. Okay. The second is name, right? So it will be similar to what I've written here, right? Exactly that. I'll put it here. Okay. 
and the third thing is action all right so for now what i'll do is i'll write action and i'll write dummy uh, edit and uh, edit and delete update or delete update okay you're getting this and then so this is my one td this is second td this is third td right serial number entry dot name and update and delete so currently i'm just hard coding this we will see how to update it better all right and that's all i want in my one row so we will end the row here and we don't want h1 and we'll end the for here so for that we'll write n4 okay so you see that the first uh, the first row of the table is actually header which can be hard coded like this right so you write tr that represents represents the row and every th represents the column all right so the first th is the serial number the first header the second is the second header and the third is the third header the column names all right but now for the records i'll have to iterate through the actual database or the the list that i'm getting right so i've iterated it and every iteration will actually create a row right that is the reason that tr comes in the for for loop all right and i end the for i'm just giving indentation for the ease of understanding html doesn't need that okay all right so with that then let us save this okay let us save this and reload my page again because we have made changes only in html so you can see that now the data is coming right all right so now i have a very good interface where i see the name of the materials in the inventory and the two actions all right any query till this point any issue sir we can use the id in place of sr number yeah we can yeah so uh, you're saying that you can use id so what we can write here to use id tell me entry dot id entry dot id that's all okay so if i now save this and i go back to my application and reload it i'll get one two okay what is the problem with this for example i delete an element with id 2 and add a new element it will get added with id 3 so the serial number will become 1 and 3 okay sir understood all right you can do at this point that's why i did but uh, there is a, a small problem with this what do you do so what do you do is you just write loop dot index okay save it let's see you see that there is no change happening why because anyway there were two entries and we got uh, you know two entries written okay i will show you later what difference this loop dot index has made okay but i want to know if there is any issue till this point is everything clear okay fine so i see that there are no doubts now let us see more into details of this table let us go more into details so what, now, what is exactly is loop here like it's for the for loop like can we use it for all kind of loops sorry i didn't get your question what exactly is loop doing here like loop dot index we are getting like eta iteration value i get that what else can we do with it Uh, see, so the problem is uh, okay. For now, let us leave it. Let us start off with only write entry dot id. Entry dot id. All right, and this will give me the same result. No issues. Later on, we'll change it to loop dot index. Okay, why we'll change it to loop dot index? Will I'll actually show you. Okay, but uh, for now, we can leave it to uh, loop dot index. Uh, sorry, entry dot id, and it will still be the same. Okay. Now the problem is. next thing that i said was this actions have to be clickable right you click on update and it goes to update page so click on delete and it goes to delete page this should happen for this what should i do i should make these links or these uh, strings clickable links right so instead of hard coding update and delete i should make it anchor tags right i want to create anchors so what will i do just remove this update and add an anchor tag all right and then here i'll write update as the content of anchor tag 
same thing i'll do with delete so when i do control and d it will copy the very line and paste it just bottom so you can see that i could very easily copy it right now what i have to do is change this update to delete all right where will they go that will be decided from here okay so what i'll do is i'll just for now let us just do it slash uh, sorry slash update slash uh, delete okay currently these two things have no meaning i've just randomly written them but uh, i mean the link to update something or the link to delete something will be very similar to this right okay so now when i save this what will happen the update and delete will become clickable okay and you can see that it becomes for every 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 entry right why is that happening because we have done that in the for loop the for loop is taking care of uh, providing everything that is there to every record in the table okay so now now note one thing when i hover on this update do you see the bottom on the bottom left i mean just note here i'm not sure how much of that is uh, visible to you but when i go on update you see that the link is appearing what does that say see it appends the endpoint to the base url itself all right 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 slash update what does that mean when i click on update it will go to this url okay do you want the proof of that let us click on update and you see what is the url here it shows not found which is is intuitive and correct because we have not defined anything but uh, this is where it goes okay let us go back and uh, see that our table for all the materials in inventory is created all right now there was one more thing that i wanted what i what did i want i want a button where i could add a new entry in the or new material in the inventory right so how do we add a new button just add a new link right so after the end for what we'll do is add a new link anchor tag which will say add underscore material again add a material is not defined i'm randomly writing it but here what do i want add thing right so i'll just write plus button add material okay let us save this you will see the link will appear in the oh it's coming in the top why is that Okay, because I'm doing it within the table tag. What we'll have to do? I'll put, have to put it below the table. All right, save it. All right, so this add material should take me to the endpoint or the page where I can add material, right? Now adding means adding data to the database, right? Which means I would provide the name of the material i would provide other things right what is uh, at this point required only name of material right so it should actually give me a form to take the name of material and then interact with it right so that is what we are going to do next all right so clicking on this add material should create a form okay so what we'll do now we'll go to my uh, by application and here in the templates, let us create one new uh, HTML called as add underscore material dot HTML. Spelling correct, right? Add underscore material dot HTML. All right. So this add uh, underscore material should have a form. What will what will be the content of that form? It will be one input field that takes the name of material and one submit button. That's all, right? So what will I do? I'll just create a boilerplate. Okay, I'll create a boilerplate. And in the boilerplate, I'll add a form. You can see that when I do form and hit enter, it will create the form tag along with this action attribute. Okay, so let us not worry about that for now. Let us add the actual, you know, thing, uh, actual content of the form. So what do I need? Three things, basically. Two types of input. One is the input text and the other is submit. Okay, and one labeling the input. So first I'll add the label. Okay, label. Let me correct this syntax first. Okay, so it is label. Label for, we are creating a label for the input of text. Right, so input type text. 
all right the next two things that we have to provide is id okay i'll write mat underscore name so this is the name of this particular input sorry id of this particular input and the second other attribute is name which is very important right so i'll just write mat underscore name please i mean note that id and name can remain same i mean choose with that right id mat name name mat name doesn't have to worry about these two things being same because they have they serve very two different very i mean two very different purposes all right this id is just for labeling this uh, particular input type so i'll write mat underscore name what does that mean i'm creating label for an input whose id is mat name okay so therefore the id should match id and for value should match okay and whatever i want to be the heading of that input that is um, material name will appear here okay so the next thing after taking the input what do we have to do we just have to submit right so the next input tag that we are going to create is submit so instead of text we'll change this to submit okay that's all for the form that's what we need so we need one label for this input and one other input to submit okay now there is one attribute called as value okay so if i write value as add what will happen the submit button that gets created will have the name as add okay i'll just show you let us save this okay now how do we render this form for this we'll have to create a new endpoint right which will be happening here right adding a new material to the database okay so we'll do that here how do we do that app dot r o u t e app dot route add material all right and since this is a form there will be something that we are retrieving from the database and there will be data that we are sending to the database right therefore we will need both the methods get and post so here we'll have to provide that method list get post all right then we'll decide what will happen with get what will happen with post define add underscore mat right the name of functions can be anything all right so the way i have written here it can be anything you want right now what will happen with this particular endpoint first it should take the i mean when i go to add material it should give me a form right so that should happen with get method okay and as i said get method we don't need to really write if the request dot method request to get why because the default method is get so i can directly write return render template what will i return this thing that form add material that's all right let us not talk about post for now for a minute let us see if this connection is done right so return uh, render template add material when you go to this url okay so this is the endpoint that i have defined this means when i go to this all materials page this material will be uh, sorry this endpoint is triggered when i click on add material and that is the reason in app.py i have created this as the endpoint okay so let me just show you the flow now what is actually happening okay so this is the change that i have made in the app.py right this means i'll have to rerun the application okay and i mean rerun meaning i don't have to do that the application by itself will rerun because of this app debug equals to true all right so you can see that it has it has shown this right uh, restarting with start debugger is active and things like that what does that mean it has reloaded the application all right so what will i do now i'll just reload this just for the changes to get incorporated some time taking something happened the click on let the add material sorry oh yeah, yeah wait let this let this let this thing uh, okay wait what i'll do is the application is restarting my code is already working all right so yeah so it is reloaded so what will i do i'll click on add material let's see 
Okay, I think there is a breakage in connection. How do you solve this? You go to the terminal, close the application. How do you close the application? Control C. Okay, copy that copy Control C. So you do Control C. This will not copy anything. This will close the server. Okay, you can see that you are back to this. Uh, uh, you know the directory. All right. Again, rerun the application. Okay. So the application is running again. Let's go back and reload. Yes, you can see that it is reloaded. Let us click on add material. Working. Okay. Right. So you click on add material. What happened? It went to that endpoint, appended it to the base URL, and we know that we have defined something at add material endpoint, so it will render the form. Okay. So till this point, it is fine. And you see this add. This add is coming because we have added that value add. Let me show you this, right? Had this been not there, if I remove the value part of it, okay, save it, go back to my app and reload it, that add will go to submit. Okay, so it's not that you're submitting always, right? Sometimes you want an intuitive name for that button. So what will you do? You'll add that as a value at reload. Uh, not like that, like this. So whatever uh, you write as the value that will appear on the button. Save it and let's go back. All right. Okay. But this is get, right? Uh, I mean, what I've done here in add material, where is my app.py here? So what is happening here? We are going to this add material with get request method because that is the default request method. All right. Now, when I click on this, if I write anything and click on add, nothing will happen. Why nothing is happening? Because I have not mentioned what should happen when I click on submit or add, right? Where do you mention that what should happen? You should mention it in the form, right? So you see that the action thing is blank. That is the reason it is reloading. So what it should go, it should go to same endpoint, add underscore material. But this time the method should be post. All right, so you're getting this. So what is happening when you directly go to add material endpoint? I mean, from the all material page from here, it will go go by get method. Okay, but when you add something, some data in the form and click on add button, it will go to same endpoint but with post method. All right. So what should happen with post method is defined in form. Right. What should happen with get method is defined from wherever you are getting this page, this form. So how, where are we getting add material page from? You're getting it from all materials. All right. So in all material, and you don't have to explicitly do anything because default is get. Okay. So you don't have to, and there is no way to provide method and everything. Method is not an attribute for every uh, element. Okay. So what is, let us go back to the flow. Let us try to understand the flow now. Let's go back, back again, reload it. All right, so we are currently in our main page. When I click on add material, what will happen? It will go to that add material endpoint with get method, right? So I, with get method, I should get the form, the for HTML for a form, right? Now, when I click on this, okay, anything I write, I click on add, what it will do? It will go to same URL, oh, sorry, same endpoint, but with post method, okay? Currently, nothing is happening because we have not defined what will happen with post, all right? So one change that was required was this, this, which we did. Now, in the back end, we should go and handle that post method, right? So this is where the thing, something called as request come into picture. Okay, request come into picture, why? Because whenever I'm typing something and submitting with post method, what did I say? The data that you're typing in the form with post method actually goes to the server with request body. If the request has body, then we'll have to retrieve uh, data from that request body, right? So with that comes the use of this word called request, all right? So then request.method, request.body, request.form, everything will come into picture with this uh, keyword. 
Are they? Yeah, somebody. So, yeah. uh, sir, I want to ask like, uh, I'm very confused uh, whenever I'm uh, seeing any tutorial on YouTube about uh, one to many and many to many relationship. Uh, can you explain that? But we're currently at the controller. Let us finish this. You go back yeah, to that tutorial. We have covered it uh, quite in detail, I guess. But uh, I'm uh, in which video? Uh, uh, it is there in I mean in the in the previous two sessions, week five open session and week six activity practice session. Okay, so you have discussed many to many. In I have discussed only one to many. I have not discussed many to many, and uh, uh, I mean I will I have also shared the link where I have discussed many to many. It is not there in as a part of this particular term. I've done it in previous time, but uh, I can share, I've already shared, I can share it again, but after what we're discussing, okay? Okay. Okay, so in ad material, we will now discuss, or I mean, uh, you know, make our endpoint capable of handling post request. All right, so how do we do that? If request dot method equals to post, then what it should do? Okay. So if request dot method equals to post, where is that uh, where is that uh, request coming from? From the form. This means there is some data in the form that we need to retrieve. Retrieving data from the form at the back end is done in this part, line number 21 onwards. All right. So what are we? So I'll write MAT underscore name. It, it can be any variable name that you uh, put. Right. Then how do I retrieve it from the form? I'll write request dot form dot get. Okay. And what do I want? I want the name uh, value of name, right? Where is my ad material? I want whatever I put in this input tag as the value in the form. So how do I get that with the help of this name attribute, mat name? All right. So I go back and I'll get, I'll write MAP underscore name. All right. So whatever has been put into the form, that input field will now get registered in this variable. All right. Okay. This is Python. I mean, this is Flask. Now we'll make use of the, the thing that we did in CLI. Now I want to, I got a variable name, right? Nice. I, sorry, material name I got. And that is what is required to add a new object into the material table. Right. So now I'll make use of uh, the right the command that we use in CLI. All right. So I'll write new underscore material equals to how do we create object? Material, right? Name equals to and what should be the name? Mat underscore name. Right. Is there anything are we uh, that we are providing in the ta material table? I don't think so. Right. We'll go to model and verify. So that is only item. Right. So ID will be, since it is a primary key, it will happen by itself. We don't have to do that. Name is something that we are taking from the form and putting in, right? And this is a pseudo column. No need to provide this. Okay. So this is how you add a new material. What was the next step? DB dot session dot add. Okay. And what is the next step? DB dot commit. Section dot. Commit. What does that mean? You have taken. I mean, how would how had we done it in the CLI? Something like this, right? Mat one equals to material. Sorry, name equals to aluminium, and that's all, right? And now this name equals to aluminium. This is coming from the form, so that is what we are doing in line number twenty one. All right. So you take it from the form and put it here. Okay. So it will be at uh, uh, attribute name and the value. Okay. So if the request dot method is post, when the uh, add button is clicked, what should happen with that data? That data should be retrieved at the back end. You know, new object has to be created with the help of that uh, in the back end. The new object has to be added in the session and the new object will get committed. So what will happen? The new uh, record will be created in the database. After this, what do we need to do? 
we need to see whether i mean we need to verify whether it is added or not and where are we verifying all the materials here so i think we should redirect to this url it would be better right so what we'll do the return redirect where are we redirecting to base url that's all right so you see this this is happening in the form you add it and when you commit what will happen you will redirect to the page where all the materials are shown so what will happen again this uh, endpoint will be triggered again all the materials are queried so now when all the materials are queried it will also query the newly added one because it is there in the database and it will show you all right so this redirect is used right so i'll import it from here next you're getting the flow okay now let us visualize this flow we save it when we save it we see that the server is restarted all right so what i'll do is i'll just simply go back and reload my complete app all right then i go to add material add a new material what is the what is the previous material aluminum is already there right so let's say iron since the in the model if you see it is unique right i could not again add aluminum okay so i'll go back to my app again so i and i click on add what will happen this in will go to backend then an object will be created with this name in then it will be added to session then added to database then redirecting to the home page what is there in the home page retrieve all the materials from the database and show them you see the in added any issue here i mean just take a while understand what is happening okay let us quickly add one more working right now what is the problem with loop dot index i'll show you okay and we are since we are using the same material the same data is seen here also right so basically what we did we created an interface of our own to visualize the same data all right and that is a web app this is an embedded data there is a difference all right now for some reason if i select this and delete this all right i select and delete okay and i uh, go to write changes okay then i go back and then i reload this see what happened 1 2 4 this is the problem with serial number right because what are we what are we printing there uh, entry dot id so it will show id if something gets deleted from between it will stop showing that and this will this uh, uh, you know the sequence will be disturbed what do we want even if you delete anything from the between it should still maintain that serial number 1 2 3 how will that be done with the help of this loop dot index which i meant uh, which, which i was writing some time back okay so let us save this and reload so you see this it is 3 even if the id of gold is 4 the serial is 3 which is intuitive which is better right so you, i hope you got the difference between writing entry dot id and the problem with it and how do we solve that so loop dot index uh, so this loop dot index is the part of jinja yeah it is part of jinja okay that is the reason i'm explicitly showing it to you right had it been something which is there a part of model or something we could have done it okay any any doubt till this point so basically what have we done we have created uh, let us go back to app.py we have created the c and r part of crud right so you created the all materials and crud uh, uh, creating it right clear now update and delete is very very easy let us cre create it very quickly so what i'll do i'll create a new endpoint okay and that i'll do in the update material obviously Okay. App dot route slash update. Okay. Let us try to understand how update is happening. Okay. This is a subtle thing that we need to focus on. So when I do slash update, okay. When I do slash update again, when I click on update, what will happen? It should take me to a form where it will ask me to write updated name. 
basically the same thing right the create form is basically the update form but when i click when i do the create thing it adds a new record when i do the update thing it's it modifies the already existing record that is the only difference but the form itself remains same right so what will happen first uh, we uh, and since we are updating again we are working with form so i will take both get and post methods equals to get and post all right and then we create that function update underscore mat okay. update underscore mat then uh, let us not talk about post for now but then we will be simply rendering a new html right which one will that be edit material right so i don't want to write update very big name right so edit material Okay, it's not there, we'll create it. So we'll go to template, create edit underscore material dot HTML. Right? And what will be the content of edit uh, material? It will be exactly same as add material. Ultimately, we are taking the form, right? So I'll just simply copy it from add material and paste it in update material. Then let us make some changes. Okay, so first thing that I will change is update this update because we are now not going into add material, going into update endpoint. The method will still remain post, right? Material name and everything will remain same. Let us change this value. All right, now let us save it. Okay, and since we have added a new endpoint, I'll just show you what how the thing changes right so let me open this on the right and vs code on the left okay so the moment i save this you see that it will uh, the re server will restart right so you see that the server is restarting again this is happening because courtesy to debug equals to true okay so whenever you do any change in app.py the server will restart okay because it has to incorporate the changes Okay, now let us go back. All right, I went back and then my update uh, button is now working, right? So if I click on update, I should go to form. But there is a problem. What is the problem? Can somebody tell me? So uh, let's say we are updating any material, then what should be the update, updated one? And that you updated that one row. will be you put whatever you want here it will be you have to select the row which row. Yes, sorry we will not know which row we are clicking right so you see if i click on first update it will go to update page if i go to second update it will go to same update page if i go to third update it is again going to same update page the problem is it doesn't know what to update update page is there but how does the application know which one to update Right. For example, if I go to update page, I click something here. Let's say I write silver and I update. Which one will get updated? Problem, right? This is a small thing that we have to keep in mind that when I want to create, we don't need to worry about primary key and things like that. But when I want to update, I first have to retrieve that entry from the database and then update it because for example, if somebody wants to change my name, he should first call me and then change my name, right? The name cannot be changed anyhow of anybody else, right? So for that, he should first know my name and my identity. So first I should be retrieved to the office where the name, wherever the Sir, your voice is breaking.
Hello, am I audible now? Yes, 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 sir. yes sir. Okay, I lost my connection briefly. Uh, can somebody also check if this is uh, still getting streamed on the YouTube? Because this is where the problems arise, arose last time. Okay, so I'll keep talking. Uh, just check if my if I'm uh, if the YouTube has resumed. Yes, the YouTube is working. Yes. Working fine, right? Okay. Okay, so I'll continue with. Uh, I hope you have not lost anything, right? I mean, we were discussing how to actually update a particular record. Clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So let us go back to our explanation page. Our explanation page, this. So currently, my uh, update endpoint is something like this. Update. Right? But with this, it doesn't know which particular record to update. Right. So what we will do is we will have something like slash something like this slash primary key slash update. So for example, what are the primary keys we have? We have one comma two comma four. These are the three things we have in the database. Right. So for example, what it should happen? What should happen when I uh, let me go back to my uh, yeah, front end. When I click on update of row plastic, it should have the primary key of plastic in the endpoint. When I click on update of aluminium, it should have a primary key of aluminium in the endpoint. And when I click on update of gold, it should have primary key of uh, gold in the update. Now, I am, why am I talking about only primary key? Because see, plastic can be small plastic, I mean, written with small letters, capital letters. So we don't have to worry about cases, but primary key is unique, right? So when I click on update for plastic, I'm sure that it will be retrieving the primary key only, right? So what, uh, what am I talking about now? So when I want to update plastic, the end point for updating plastic should be slash one slash update. Okay? When I want to update aluminium, the endpoint for that should be slash two slash update and so on. All right. But we cannot hard code, right? I mean, if you see here, uh, where, where, yeah, in app.py, if I write something like this slash one, one slash update, what will, what will happen for plastic? It will work fine, but for aluminium also, it will go to one update. For gold also, it will go to one update because this is hard coding of endpoint, hard coding of data, right? This is not what we want. We want the data to go to change dynamically in the endpoint, right? This is where flask converters come into picture. All right. So what are flask converters? Basically, they are a way to provide data to the endpoint. All right. So what I want to add now, I want to add id okay but i want this id to be taken as variable the endpoint should understand that okay this is a variable coming from outside so how do we do that something like this so we put it in angle brackets okay and since i this id is always going to be integer we can also uh, define the type of it int do you understand what is happening here what is happening this endpoint will take uh, integer whose value can be one, two, three, but whose va variable name is ID. So basically it's like uh, defining a variable in Python ID equals to, or equals to one, right? So when I write ID equals to one, what does that mean? Either I write ID or I write one, it's the one and the same thing. So what will happen when I write int do, uh, colon ID, this endpoint will take ID, uh, you know, variably. Okay. And how do I use this ID? This has to be passed as argument to the function. Are you getting this? So whatever we are passing on, whatever is variable in the endpoint actually goes as an argument to the 
map view uh, view function all right so now that i have id what can i do with this id i can retrieve that very record from the database how do i do, do that i'll write this underscore material how do i retrieve something from a material table with the help of its id dot query dot get yes material dot query dot get and what will i provide here id that's all okay now this will help me to specifically retrieve plastic if i want to specifically retrieve aluminium if i want to and so on all right then once this material is updated that particular material is updated and uh, i mean updated meaning once this material is retrieved from the database what will this be actually what will this material will be it will be object right what does get uh, retrieved from the database it retrieves object this means that it has all the attributes along with it so how can i use this uh, to change the value how can i use this i can use it to uh, update the value now where this value will come from this value will come from form right so we'll write this condition if request dot method and all and we'll continue okay so while what i'll do is i'll here i'll write if request dot method equals to post okay if request dot method equals to post what it should do it should uh, okay so what i'll do first is i will retrieve the material anyway doesn't matter if the request is get or post let us retrieve the material anyway okay then if the request dot method equals to post then we will take the updated name the name that i want uh, the entry to get updated with how do i to take that <clears throat> updt updated underscore name equals to the same thing request dot form dot get right so i had not changed so if you see in the edit material i had not changed this material name right therefore i'll use it i'll be using same so where am where am i i'm dot p by right so updated name equals to request dot form dot get so you take the name from there then you have this object what do you want to update its name and with what updated name okay this is how you update so what is happening first you retrieve the object okay then you retrieve the data from the form then you change the value with the new data that is coming from the form but that's not all once you are changing the name that change should be reflected in the database how will the change get reflected on the database when you do db dot session dot every change every delete every update every add should uh, uh, i mean the changes should be reflected on the database so this is a must that has to be done after every change okay for reading it's not changing right we are retrieving so we don't have to do commit anywhere but for adding for updating and for deleting we we'll have to commit okay so did you get the flow happening from line number 30 to 36 first uh, or 32 to 36 what happened first we retrieved the material from the id okay and that id uh, went through the end point okay then we retrieved the material then we uh, then based on the request whether it was post or it was get we did certain things if it is post this means we have added data from the form that is we have given the data the updated name has been given in the form and then we have clicked on update right then that data will be uh, you know saved in updated underscore name then it will be uh, applied to the material retrieve and the data gets committed okay that's what we wanted but what is the problem this is fine okay let us leave it for here let us go back to our uh, edit material dot html this is the problem right this is one problem we need to change this also right 
how do we make sure that the uh, primary key comes here so for that what we'll do therefore i have written this this material uh, in the beginning doesn't matter if it is get or post i have retrieved it in the beginning of the uh, function right now we will write about the get method so it will be returning render template and this will yeah basically this whatever i have written already <clears throat> sorry okay edit material but then what i'll do is i will also provide the material along with it this material equals to this material okay why is this done i'll show you now so what is the flow now let us try to understand flow when i go to int dot update what should happen it should first go to this page which is form right and in the form if you see i want to update this also right the endpoint so how do i update the endpoint this is where i'll make use of that this material thing right this underscore material and what do i want slash one slash update slash two dot slash update right dot id this is what i want right so in the get method that is coming here doesn't matter what the endpoint is first you retrieve all the the complete uh, uh, that particular object then supply that object or put that object in the template why is this required because then the same object we are retrieving from or we are using in the form the endpoint the action has to be provided right so it should go to that particular id only therefore i am writing this material dot id right so what will happen then when i click on submit this particular endpoint will be hit but with post method all right initially it will be hitting but with get method all right and then and you render the things okay okay after commit then what we have to do that we'll see later let us now change this uh, add material thing sorry all material in all material also we have this slash update right slash delete slash update so what do we want it should take uh, the shape of one for uh, plastic two for aluminium three for gold so how do we do that this is here it is very easy because i have the entry right this means i have the record so what will i do here i'll write something like this entry dot id slash that's all i wanted to do right how is this helping me i'll show you i'll uh, show you in the uh, working of application just save this for now okay then in the edit material also i think we're done so let's save this and in the app.py also let's save this okay uh, explanation we don't need to save but okay let's save this and so let me go to the front end of the application currently this is the app uh, the page right currently this is the page it is not the uh, new page it is the originally rendered page right so the page that was already rendered the sa same page i am showing you let us try to see the content of this page view page source so what do you see so i mean when you do view page source it actually shows you the actual html that got rendered right so this is the uh, the working for loop right you see we have uh, this for loop that we have created in the template actually creates three different rows and those rows are actually shown there all right so in the view page source you can actually see what is the actual html that got rendered this is just a template right uh, browser don't understand template they understand rend uh, the actual rendered or written html which they uh, very clearly render and what is the uh, actual html this is the actual html what is the problem here you see the update delete update delete update delete it is same link doesn't matter what the material is right but now note the difference now when i reload this what happens the changes are incorporated now let me go back and do the view page source once again do you see the difference one update two update four update right how is this coming this is coming from uh, this thing all material this entry dot id right so this is how you change the uh, uh, you know the link dynamically and how is this helping me 
initially when i was going to any material and clicking on update it was showing me slash update doesn't matter which one but now if i click on update you see it at the bottom i get slash one slash update all right which is intuitive that it will update only plastic when i click for aluminium it will update only aluminium so you can see the link changing dynamically right so i'll go to updates so you can see that this is the actual link slash one slash update all right is this clear yeah any Sir, doubt uh, till this point when we click the update and the unique constraint uh, should be maintained here no unique con yes unique constraint should be maintained yeah i mean i cannot simply rename and uh, uh, rename something to i mean for example when i go back to my app okay back i cannot rename aluminium to plastic or gold right that it will not allow Okay. okay, so I'll click on update. Yeah, good. Somebody else raise hand. No, okay. All right. Now let us go back to the final thing of this uh, update part. What is the final thing? I have not done what should happen after things getting added to the database. What should happen? Again, same thing, redirecting to the all material page. So I'll just copy this part and paste it here. Okay, now let us try to understand the flow before we go to app. When I click on uh, slash one slash update, what happens? It goes to the get method in the form. It also updates the get method uh, that action attribute with slash one slash update. It will take the data uh, from the form. When I click on update, it hits the same endpoint with post method and then whatever is written in post method happens. All right, how do we update? You simply retrieve the object and you can directly assign the object dot attribute with whatever new thing you want to uh, do, right? So I want to update ma this material dot name with updated name. That's what I wanted to do. That's what we did. Okay, let us save this and try it again. All material, so I'll close this. I hope this is clear. All right, now I'll show you one more thing. So the page source for this is clear, right? When I click on add material, you see what happens. I'll open the page, page source of this. Uh, add material, did I not change that? Okay, I click on add, add material, not add material. I want to click on update. So when I click on update, this is the form, right? Now let us see the page source. So you see the page source in action also it is getting one update right similarly if i go back and do update for aluminium and see the page source i'll see two update how is this coming this is coming from this this material equals to this material right so wherever we need that id wherever we need that id that has to be provided to that html page right i needed this id in the update html or edit material.html i provided that okay so now what will happen when I click on submit or when I click on edit, it will actually go to this particular endpoint only because when I'm creating an endpoint, my duty is my application should go to all defined endpoints only, not any new. All right. So when I click on this with post, it will go to post method. Okay. Let's see that in here. So document, right? Material name, which one did we do? A uh, two, this means aluminum, right? So I'll change this to so. Okay, let's update. Let's see what happens. So you see that the aluminum got updated to box height. All right, so basically in this case, we can update only name. There can be, if there are multiple fields, multiple fields can be updated, right? Now let us change this goal to its uh, another name. So it's getting updated. Why is it coming back to same page? Because of redirect, right? And those two are independent operation. Every time I redirect, it is retrieving whatever is there in the database and throwing to me. That's all, nothing else. Okay, let's add new material. Uh, what should I add? Okay, IN. IN added, let us update it. Updated, right? The way we have created updated, same thing will be done for delete. That's all, right? Same thing. Same way we create link, same way we create endpoint. 
okay let's go to low i mean let's go there and see that okay so very quickly i'll do the delete part okay delete is what what how should delete work i click on delete and this is gone right so no form nothing so do we need any get and post no right we will only need what do we need the id right the the way it is taking slash one slash update similarly it should take slash one slash delete right that's all is required so how where do we change first we will go to all materials and we'll change this part right in the very same way the way we have done update right so what i'll do i'll just simply copy this and paste it here so now what will be the endpoints what will be the link attached to this anchor tags slash one slash delete slash two slash delete and so on okay so that's all that's all we need to do in the html part all right now what we do in the uh, in the controller part we'll add an endpoint for delete right so at the rate app uh, dot route okay then slash same thing right here also i want a dynamic link so i'll just copy it here but then this time it will be delete okay as delete we do not need get and post method so we'll leave it as is fine delete material okay no variable uh, yeah there is a variable in the link therefore we'll have to provide the same variable if this is id this is id if this is capital id this should be capital id right so it is just like passing argument to the function okay and how will that argument be provided by the help of endpoint okay so you create this endpoint uh, this function and what sh should this function do it will first retrieve that material from the uh, from the database how is material retrieved same thing like from this okay this material material dot query dot get id and what do we have to do with material db dot session dot delete that's all update and delete i did not show in cli but i'm showing it here okay so this is how you update and this is how you delete db dot session dot delete will deleting make changes in the database definitely therefore we will need db dot session dot Okay, and what are we deleting? This material, so that has to be provided. Okay, db dot session dot delete this material, and then comment the changes. What should happen after deleting? You should get back to the same list. So return a redirect to main page. That's all we want. Okay, let us save this. Okay, and let us go back to app. Uh, I'll close this page sources and now I'll reload this page and now let us see, uh, not inspect, let us see the page source. So you can see your uh, the links are now very clearly updated, slash one, slash delete, slash two, slash four, all right? So when I click on delete plastic, okay, let us delete IN, what will happen? This entry should get removed from the table. Gone, right so it looks like as if the data i mean the uh, the entry is dynamically gone from the table but there are something that happened right you click on one endpoint then it went to that endpoint did something at the back end then re-rendered the page right so this page got re-rendered and there with the three entries initially there were four the entry got deleted and the page got re-rendered all right let me add what was the material deleted Ferrum. Okay, adding ferrum. Ferrum added. Okay, then I delete ferrum. Ferrum deleted. Okay, so this is all the four CRUD operations for material. And now we have a very good interface where I can delete, add, update, and create. And view, obviously. I mean, view is always there. Okay, any issues till now? Uh, till the four thing, the four things that we did. So this is how you create application. This is model. All these things are view, and this is your controller. Okay, any query, any doubt, any question? Sir, I just saw that whenever we delete an entry from the database, the primary key also changes. No, why, why is that? I think because the auto increment is on. 
no 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 see primary key changes for what means if we delete But, the uh, entry and the primary key are not in the sequence hmm. then they be, then they come in the sequence no see so this is whatever we are seeing here is not primary key at all this is the, no, sir, uh, in the index of the, the i saw in the db browser okay let's check so this is our app and let us open db browser on the right okay this is db browser okay let me reload this so this is the actual state of the application right 1 2 4 1 2 3 these are not primary key remember okay what i'll do i'll add a new material what should i add rubber okay rubber is a new material what do you think will happen here five rubber right where mm -hmm. oh, change though we did not change change uh, a lot of things in the model right no 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 model we did not uh, did not touch model was as it is mm -hmm. okay so now when i reload this you see five rubber okay now let me delete uh, yeah, or but we but we what operation we did on iron is one operation is we updated then we deleted and uh, again we added so yeah, once so we have updated add... and deleted so the iron uh, would have been uh, gone but its uh, id would be there when we add on a param again it should be fine no sir no 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 when you delete it's gone okay when you deleted. see for example when i delete rubber which with whatever id it was created that is gone okay let's check for example now when i click on delete what should happen this entry should go right delete in the application i'll see the changes happening there itself but here i'll have to reload okay now add some other material sir will be what will be the so id 5 or 6 yeah let's add rubber 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 it's not there it should be 6 no sir let's check no if the id is not there right it will come back with the same if the id is not there it will so what is the largest id 4 Okay. already there it will auto increment That's with that right. okay when we add uh, when we delete uh, arrow and add it what will happen sir please delete, delete. Uh, row, row number 3 ha so when you delete arrow what was the original id no Four. delete yeah yeah so you deleted arrow what is the original id 4 okay 4 yeah. is gone what is the largest id 5 5 so what is the new what will be the new id should be 6 should six. be 6 yes it will be auto incremented to be the the latest id right yeah so correct happening so sir the uh, whenever the last record is deleted uh, the id will not be retained that will be wiped out completely unlike if we the if the entry is deleted uh, any any entry above the last entry right sir yeah see if the entry is deleted doesn't matter if it is last or first see there is these are two different things i can delete anything the record is gone okay but how are id getting added id will take the next value to the largest value there mm -hmm. okay so i mean i hope you are getting what i'm saying yes, sir sir one more uh, it's database uh, related now uh, since uh, i mean once you remove plastic but in the items list we have two items in the plastic will you be able to delete sir what happens to that uh, item list ah, right right so there are two things one is we can code for the items to become orphan that is no uh, parent there but that will actually disturb our schema so what we'll have to do we'll have to make sure that when i delete a plastic which is actually a parent the uh, the children also get deleted okay we'll have to make sure Sir, can you in the DB can you show the material item list, sir? One and two only rods, iron rods. I mean aluminium rods. That's all, sir. Sir, it should be like on delete cascade, right? But now yes. this uh, we, uh, <coughs> now if we go and uh, check the what material it is made of, uh, there will be some changes, no, sir. uh means our okay. schema has changed now yeah yeah one second let me see let me see what is there in the material Box see side. the yeah. id 1 and 2 is there right yeah remove mm. one sir okay 
let us delete the uh, plastic let's see so deleted plastic okay. Okay, let us check the item see you're getting this currently uh, so mal. if you do not write anything the the build value will be gone okay so that's what i'm saying i can you can code it in a way that it remains i mean the things remain okay or you can code it in a way that if you delete the parent the children are also gone okay how do we do that we'll go to our model okay and here there are in other words if children are there parents should not be deleted i mean it depends on the, our model see for example when i have one parent four children okay if children uh, now uh, is children is is a child dependent on parent or parent dependent on child child is dependent who is independent here who is independent parent and parent is an independent entity this means doesn't matter if the child stays or gets deleted nothing will happen to parent because it is an independent entity okay but on the other hand if i delete a parent all the children that belong to that parent should get deleted are you Sir, getting pardon? this yeah i'll Can come repeat back. once again what you said yeah yeah so for example this is item and these are materials okay so when i when i delete a item when i delete an item nothing will happen to parent because parent might also have other items connected to it okay but on mm. the other hand if i delete a, a material all the all the uh, uh, you know all the items that were created by that material become orphan so they should also get deleted is what we are expecting hmm. okay currently that is not happening but that's what i said there is a way to either have both excuse me sir hmm. sir in the front end page when i am trying to click on updates sir i am getting an operational error yeah welcome to that no issues wait I'll I'm, I'll take I'll take your doubts no issues. Okay, sir. Can you also? Minute. I'll I'll try to explain what we are trying to do with this parent and child. Give me a minute. Sir, in this situation, like, can we also do that if uh, the parent is there and there are uh, items of uh, that material, then if we uh, if if there are uh, children, we we restrict that unless there are children, you cannot delete the parent. Mm, unless there are uh, okay if there are children do not delete parent or give a warning that there are ch associated values and if you delete that there will yeah, be yeah yeah you can definitely do that yes how do you do that uh, maybe see what is happening to... at this point i'll show you how do you do that sir we can retrieve the list of the items that uh, material has and if that is not empty zero Yeah, like if it is empty, you can delete. Yeah, multiple ways. One way of that is just one thing you have to do. See, when I deleted the parent for the plastic, when I deleted plastic spoon and poly bag became orphan, right? So their build became null, right? What can you do in this build column? Just add not null. Nullable equals to false. Then it will not allow. Getting. So what will yes. what it will do, sir? We I think we need to. It will throw error that we have to take care of. Okay, let's not go into so many details. Understand it basically, and then we'll go one by one. Okay. Sure. Sir. Uh, let us first uh, try to understand that uh, you know uh, deleting this and deleting that. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll just open a Jamboard for a. Uh, I'll open Paint quickly. So. Yes. Go ahead. So, uh, what is what does this backrest do? Like you have you to have refer to um, that. Uh, you have to refer to last session. Uh, Who is that? Made of. Who uh, speak? Me. Sanjuli, you have to refer to the last session. That very. That was, was discussed in the last session. Back reference. Sir, so I know how to use this, but I am not getting the concept. Okay, I'll I'll come to you. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, explain this. Okay, so let's say there is parent. Can you see this parent? No. Wait. So there is one parent, and let's say there are three children, right? 
CH1, CH2, and CH3. Okay. Now, who can independently exist in our database according to the model that we have created? We can first create a parent, which is an independent quantity, right? But we cannot create a child without specifying who the parent is, right? Are you clear with this? This means this is an independent, right? And this is a dependent quantity. Okay. What does that mean? An independent can exist. I mean, parent does not have anything to do whether a child exists or not, but a child has everything to do if the parent exists or not. Right. So what, what can happen? I can very clearly delete a child and nothing will happen to parent. Okay. I can very easily, I should select and delete by the way. Yeah. So I can very easily delete the child. Let's say this three child three, I deleted. Nothing should happen to parent. Why? Because there are other children who are dependent on this parent. Okay. But on the other hand, what if I deleted a parent? All the child became orphan. Right. That is the reason we are having this null here. So spoon and poly bags were children of plastic. So when plastic got deleted, they became orphan. They don't have any build at this point. Okay. So there are two ways to deal it, uh, deal with it. One is uh, the nullable thing I told, right? So if you make the build column not nullable, it will not allow null values. This means it will throw error. Okay, we can deal with that error later. But the other way, the better way of that would be, better way of that would be when you want to delete a parent, you don't delete parent, you delete the entire set, parent and children. What does that mean? When I delete plastic, the spoon and poly bags also should get deleted which is more intuitive in terms of this condition. Are you getting? If there is no material plastic, how can you have atoms, items made of plastic? Yes, sir. Sir, but uh, items are already made, right? If you have no uh, material left, you cannot add any more, but you have built that till now. So how can you delete that? In I can because I can do anything I want with the data. <laughs> no, no, that is not the right answer. In real world, it does not exist something like this. Right? No, no. So see, when I want to delete the material, I don't want, I'm not saying that does not mean that the material is getting over. That does not mean that. It is about availability and non-availability. If the plastic is deleted in the inventory, if plastic is only not there, then how can we have materials made of plastic? Is what we are. This is the, the this is the case in this. Okay, what you are saying is also fine. No issues. You delete a parent and leave children as is, but then it will disrupt your database. Right, the one to many relationship is gone. So null will be there in the build. Yeah, at this point it is happen. there, right? Because we have not coded mm -hmm. for it. So null will be there, yeah. but having null values is a very big uh, what we call uh, inconsistency of the database. Mm -hmm. That is not what we want, right? At this point, what we are saying is, if the parent is not there, we want to make sure that the children of that parent are also gone. Okay. Now let us go to let us take a more uh, you know uh, what you call more practical example. For example, uh, week five lab assignment, right? So in week five lab assignment, we have student. Okay, and the student is taking courses one, two, three. What if I want to delete student? What is the meaning of having courses? So the course will there will remain no retained. Course will still remain, right? Yes, sir. No, no. Courses meaning courses for that student. I mean, courses student that student will be not there, sir. Yes, that that's what. So not. that entry, I mean, the the courses. Uh, sorry, the student table is actually having some entry, right? You are creating entries, and you are saying that this student one has course one, course two, and course three. Now you are seeing that the student delete student one. What is the point of having course one, course two, course three? I mean, this set, you don't need to have this set at all. Yeah, there is student two and there can be other set, course two, course three. So you will, uh, so we will, uh, the relationship between the student and course, which is enrollment, we will delete from that also. Yes, we'll delete from enrollment, but we're talking about many to many. 
this is what is our relationship one to many right where parent has very uh, you know paramount importance so you cannot have child or you cannot have an orphan child basically sir but in this case enrollment is the child right it uh, it it takes no, no. from no see uh, enrollment uh, enrollment is uh -huh. an association between your student and course and this is the case of many to many what did i say in many to many there are no there is no concept of parent and child there are siblings siblings and siblings are independent right any any one of them can uh, you know vanish at any point okay so there is no parent and child association and siblings is many to many okay let me write it here many to many so many to many there will be siblings and association okay that is the reason in many to many you have three different tables three tables but in Because, one to many uh, yes sir in one to many you have parent and child okay and you don't have any association so how many two tables Okay, so, so we have keep to this keep in this mind. in mind. It is a quiz question. In uh, lab assignment also while coding. Yeah, sorry. So we have to keep this in mind while doing the lab assignment also. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So I mean, uh, I'm not sure if uh, lab assignment require you to have a relationship at least week five. I'm not sure. Let me confirm that. But if at all you need, it would be one to many. so but a uh, courses and student the relationship between courses and student is many to many right okay fine so okay let me let me just check let me just check the uh, uh i will check the question statement for week five lab assignment and get back to you with that and there okay? but at, at this point i hope two point uh, yes for two different tables so that that must be many to many i guess so. yeah two different table okay but uh, what is actually asked of week 5 i'm not really sure let me check that okay yeah so how do you make sure that uh, how do you make sure that the children get deleted when the parent gets deleted so what do you do you write cascade equals to cascade equals to true no cascade you equals to on comma on okay okay so you do cascade on delete Okay, mm -hmm. what will this do? When you delete a parent, all the children will be deleted. There is an app here. Yeah. Okay, some issue with syntax. cascade on delete let me check the syntax yeah no issues on delete cascade or cascade on delete i'm mixing up the syntax so i guess okay. you have tried Or oh, capital O N and capital D. One second, one second, check. This is some random documentation I'm checking. No, we have written on delete cascade now, sir. One second. Okay, it's so on delete cascade, is it? Delete on. I'm forgetting the. The syntax. Give me a minute. Let us go to Flask SQL Alchemy documentation. Okay, so we are in delete. It's all comma delete. 
all all is it okay okay sorry all delete right all comma delete there is or delete or fill or delete orphan is i guess sql alchemy oh. syntax this is flask yeah okay. yeah uh, multiple syntax i am uh, following flask sql alchemy so with that so delete all cascade is is this fine cascade all delete yes sir okay now let us rerun the application and check running let's go to front end reload this okay now open the database reload this so what i'm expecting when you delete okay which one is two material so when you delete box eight when you delete box eight you should get uh, rods and plates deleted yeah right so this is better okay so i mean you can uh, decide on what needs to happen so if you remove this cascade all delete what will happen the uh, the children will become orphan okay which is anyway unethical we do not want orphan children right so we do not want the build to remain null because that will unnecessary add things a uh, problem to our uh, database how do we deal with it right so the one way to do it this right this is one way second way is remove this you don't want to cascade then you uh, treat the null value how do we do that in the this column build column we will add nullable equals to false all right this means every time i click on delete of parent it will throw error right and then that error can be caught and uh, exception can be handled so we are not into exception handling at this point so we will not see that okay when we look exception and handling then we will uh, maybe treat on that okay all right so our application seems to be working fine with this uh, setup and one thing you, did you notice i added cascade or delete made change in the model saved it but i did not recreate the database why is that no change in the no change in the scheme right schema. anyway i made change in the pseudo column okay so schema is not changed okay so i think paint is done so i'll save it i'll add this also where do i save it so also do backref then you can add please <laughs> backref is there no already see backref is back referencing what does that mean uh, you are referring to a column that does not exist in that table you are creating an attribute for another table see uh, i mean item dot made of i can write right so if you see the explanation dot txt uh, with this right item one dot made of it looks as if made of is an attribute of item table but it's now where there in the model do you see made of as attribute no but then how do how are you still using it because of this back ref right what does this mean it uh, the the way you are using material dot items similarly you can use item dot made of which acts as a pseudo attribute of item table even if it does not exist right that is what is back ref back referencing okay now how to make use of it is something that we have seen in the sessions yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. one second so i'm go ahead sir uh, my delete is not working can you see it and do it please yeah one second aditya yes, sir when i'm trying to click on updates i am getting an operational error okay fine so uh, how many of you are facing error with the code you can raise your hand soham aditya hasan okay so we'll go with soham once i'll stop sharing you can share your screen so so the session is uh, like the main session is done right yeah so i have told you how to create uh, i mean how to do crud with uh, uh, i mean crud with one entity you can now do crud with other entity this is a task that you can do all right this will help you with uh, the lab assignment okay because same thing same endpoint will create same uh, you know update item update the material i mean delete item all those things will be there right so what i'll do as a code what i'll share is i'll share the entire code of uh, the material as well as item okay so crud for material and crud for item everything i'll share 
and then you can make out what is the difference there will be hardly any difference okay ha so yes uh, so ham what is the issue so database is, is locked huh? database is locked okay can you scroll down okay see problem is uh, go to db browser you click on right changes yeah now minimize db browser reload your page okay now you go back to your app.py sorry the terminal wherever you are running the app run your application okay reload okay now try Mm, working sir thank working, you right so why is that because uh, database is locked means your database is open at two different places and no commit is done so okay. the db dot session dot commit what we are doing here programmatically is that right changes that you did in db browser okay sir okay you can stop sharing yeah who else adit is it sir my issue is solved now i was facing the same error okay who else has issue uh, hasan Uh, sir, I guess I have some problem with the database. So, I, because you can, I'm getting some copy share? of the database. Sorry, sir, I'm getting some copy of the database. So, copy of the database. The is it? Uh, That's okay. I mean, we are referring to the database in instance folder. We don't have to worry about copies and everything. Is your yes. application working or is it causing error? Yes, sir, it's working. Ah, uh, then it's fine. Leave it. Yeah, somebody else uh, was speaking before. So, uh, yes, Sanjuli. I have a doubt, like how to uh, do a many to many re relationship. I am trying uh, to do in the lab assignment. Uh, I defined secondary, which sir has done, but mm. what does it mean? I don't know. Mm. in the of uh, uh, screencast tutorial okay. all right so i'll quickly show you i'll yes. quickly show you many to many uh, just give me a minute uh, meanwhile um, before that i'll take one more doubt swam you had raised hand sir uh, in the screencast the sir has used import os and uh, for the relative part he has used some different syntax so what is that uh where exactly for the directory Yes, for the sir. database is it so Sorry, see no. i mean that is uh, database uh, see what we are doing here we are assuming that our application the database and everything are on the same project folder right the project folder we created content this is the project folder name content right uh, sir made use of os to actually uh, get the absolute part doesn't matter where it is okay so what they do is uh, with the help of os we don't have to write uh, this where in app.py here right so in the my test.db we are assuming that it will be created in the same uh, directory within the instance folder we are assuming that right but using os is other way where we uh, ourselves provide that okay this is where i want my db directory to be okay nothing no difference in that so if you print one by one the things you will see that okay we are basically printing the absolute path only okay sir okay you. if you find that confusing i think this is simpler okay sir okay many to many relationship okay so i'll stop uh, my application oh i am not sharing is it okay yes sir. okay so what i'll do now i'll quickly create another uh, module model underscore mtm many to many dot py okay model for many to many dot py now how do we do that how do we make sure that the uh, code is then for many to many we'll copy everything from our one to many relationship okay one to many one model and paste it here and we'll make some changes in the database uh, sorry the the way models are written okay now 
Now tell me the difference. What did I say? When I said that when you create a child, you need to have this extra column to specify who the parent is. Okay. But when, when you are creating a child to specify who the parent is, when will this condition arise in one to many? Okay. So one to many means concept of parent and child. In many to many, it is a concept of siblings. So both are independent. This means while creating one element that is material element, for example, now we are talking about many to many for material and item. Okay. So while creating material element, you don't need to specify what item, what is the item on the conversely, if you create an item, you don't need to specify what is the material. I mean, specify meaning while creating the object itself. Okay. What is happening till now while well, when creating the item object, I need to provide who the material, what the material is, right? But in many to many, I don't need to provide what material it is having. This means if I don't need to provide what material we are using, we don't need this line at all. DB dot column, uh, this thing, DB dot foreign key line. If we do not need this, I mean for in this model, so what we'll do, I'll remove it. Okay. And again, there is no concept of parent and child, no concept of orphan when the parent is deleted. So no concept of all deleted, cascading. Okay. Let us remove these things. Okay. Okay. So these are two independent models now. Okay. What does that mean? Let me go back to my paint. Uh, okay. So when I write uh, one to many, so in one to many, what was the thing? So when you create a parent, it is an independent. Okay. And child was dependent. Okay. Pardon my spelling. All right. So when the parent is independent, child was dependent. This means for child, you need to specify who the parent is, right? CH1, who is parent? CH2, who is parent? Okay. If you don't have parent, you cannot create children. This was the thing in one to many, but now let us come to many to many. Okay. In many to many, there is a concept of sibling. So let's say if, uh, and sibling and siblings are independent. This means you can create sibling, uh, I mean, object from one uh, model and create object from other model and you don't have to do anything. This means if I am creating many to many for material and item, I can independently create material MAT1, MAT2, and I can independently create items, items one and item two. Then assign materials later. Then we will do the assignment. Okay. Now, if I try to understand this more practically, what does this mean? When I say uh, I n in one to many, I mean, I'm, I'll just pull this line off, right? So when I write I n in one to many and I say bucket, I am saying that the bucket is made only of iron, not of anything else. But when I say nail, again, I will say nail is only made of iron, but not of anything else. But on the other hand, there is bucket and there is nail that is made from iron. So iron can have multiple items created. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, what happened? Sorry, what happened? Am I not audible? Uh, no, you are. What happened, Sanjoy? Example you are taking. Can you explain this? Accounts and user. Accounts and user with uh, what sense? I mean, in what sense? Many to Multi me. many to me. Okay. <laughs> So let me come to many to many for that. Okay. So we are in one to many, right? So when I'm saying one to many, I can say IN has multiple items, but on the other hand, one item when specified made by IN, I cannot say nail is made of plastic. This will not happen with one to many. Okay. Now let us go to many to many. 
so when i say i create uh, uh, when i create a what we call item item and what account so, so when i sorry i'll take uh, i'll see the recording later actually i'm low on battery anyway uh, uh, th thank you for the session bye yeah yeah okay is this is uh, for uh... okay fine so where are we in the pain so what i was saying in many to many i'll just continue with this in many to many what can what can we do we can create materials independently item independently what does that mean when i say table table will require wood it will require iron this means table can be made by multiple materials and on the other hand multiple items can be made of one material right so when i say wood i can make multiple items from wood and on the other hand an item can be made using more than one material this is what many to many would mean okay in case of customer and account in case of customer and account sorry account all right one customer can have multiple accounts okay and but one account can be uh, can be created to uh, that incorporates multiple customer things like joint account right so joint account are something is something that has one or more customers right and on the other hand a customer can have multiple accounts in multiple banks right so this is how you realize many to many in customer and account case all right many to many in material and item case okay did you get the point now yes. how do we code it so in case of coding the only change that we that i said that uh, there is something called as association table okay so since these are independent i'll create material independently i'll create item independently and then i'll have another table which will help me to store only the association not anything else only association so what will that be it will be a new table called as association name it anything you want but uh, okay So are you saying something? <laughs> Hello, am I audible? Ah, uh, yes, sir, audible. Yes, sir. Yes. Did you lose me? Started uh, with the class association. Okay. Uh, what did you lose till here? Is it okay? Up uh, to association. Yes, sir. Yes. After After model, you have put, sir, That's all. So that is what I did. Uh, is the screen still shared? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. All right. So what did I say? The association table will only store the association. For example, what it will, it will store is, uh, I'll show you in the pane. For for example, item one has primary key one. Item two has primary key two. All right. Similarly, sorry, material. Sorry. Similarly, uh, item one has primary key one and two. Okay. So material has these two primary keys. Items has these two primary keys. Okay. If material one is used to make item one and item two so in the association table you will have one come on man. in the association you will have one comma one and one comma two okay this is the screen is not writing here in the association table we'll have one comma one and one comma two what does that mean uh, material with primary key one is associated with uh, item with primary key one Similarly, material with primary key one is again associated with item with primary key two. Okay. If you want to have a linking between these two, what will you write? Material with primary key two is uh, having item created item with primary key one. Similarly, material with primary two is having 
uh, item that has primary key or is created by uh, is used to create an item that has primary key two. All right. This one comma one one two two one two two is something that is stored in association table. So basically, what do you think are we storing? Primary keys only, right? It is just the primary keys getting stored in the association table, right? So what will be the content of association table? It will be. I'll write mat underscore id equals to, and I'll copy this entire line here. Okay, and similarly, item no, you have ID. done mat equal to id equals. Yeah, yeah, I'll correct. I'll correct. I have not made the changes. Okay, so these are the two things that are getting stored in the association table. Okay, now what are these? Are these primary key for the table? No, no sir. These are actually no. foreign keys coming from different foreign table. Key. So you have to specify that. Ab dot uh, foreign key. Okay, and specify for foreign key. Similarly, I'll write db dot foreign key, and then we'll specify what the foreign key is. Seven. Let me change the spelling also. Foreign key. Okay. Now, mat id is the foreign key coming from where? It's coming from material dot id. Material. Right. Similarly, item primary coming from item dot id. All right. Now, should I remove this or keep it? Primary key equals to true. Primary key equals to true. Sir, you should remove this. I guess. Okay. So either I can either remove it or either I'll keep it. But at this case, I'll keep it. What does that mean? The primary key when you set two, uh, you know, attributes as primary key, they together become a composite key. Okay. So what will be the what are the records we'll have? For example, there are. Uh, okay. Let's go back to our explanation. Dot txt. Let's say in item table. In material table, there are primary keys one comma two, and in item table, there are primary keys one comma two. Okay, so what will be there in the association table? Let's say one comma one. Okay, I mean I'm referring to this paint, right? One comma one, one comma two, two comma one, two comma two. Okay, so there will be one comma one, there will be one comma two, there will be two comma one, and there will be two comma two. Okay, one. Comma one. This combination is it appearing once only, or it is multiply up appearing? Multiple. One comma one. The combination. Once. once. Yes, once. it is once. It is once. That is the that is reason. That is the reason uh, we are saying that it is composite key. One comma one. This combination is appearing once and acting as a primary key for this entire association table. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, here. All right. So in the association table, you'll have basically two rows, and the combination of those two rows is actually acting as a primary key for that table. So you don't have to do it. If this is confusing, what do you do? You write id equals to, then you write everything db dot column things like that. Right? Okay. Set primary key this to true and remove everything. Okay, so what does that mean? The association table has its own primary key, and these are just the entries. No primary key now, no composite key now. Okay, I think this is better. So there is a material, there is item, they are independent, and their relation is stored in association table. Okay, which has its own primary key, and what are the contents of this association table? The primary keys of other table acting as foreign keys. Okay, so this is association table. Now I know it. You know it. Will the material and item know that their association is stored in an association table? How do we make sure that they know it? That relation once. No. So this is where this attribute called as secondary come into picture. So in secondary, we'll have to write the uh, I think table name. Okay. 
if association is the class name and i go to creating the table what will be the name of table association with small a right so that has to be provided here so both item and material will now know that their relation the data related to their uh, you know one to many to many relationship is stored in association table and that is specified in secondary uh, attribute okay back ref and everything will still remain as it is but this secondary specifies that the uh, relation this 1 comma 1 2 comma 1 will be stored in association table uh, is uh, specified to this both models using the secondary attribute okay this is where secondary comes in that's all this is many to many relationship how do you make sure how do you make use of it db dot create all and you go about doing that okay so yeah. Why you have not used like uh, why you uh, don't uh, give anything in item db dot relation this uh, column uh, this sorry this row line number eight in item yeah. also I gave no item is there no in the item class yeah in item class explain that in last class is very detailed you can understand that's why that is there. I'm not getting a uh, like uh, you have used uh, this. Uh, no, so you either package. use it here or you use it in this table. This is what I said. That's what I'm saying. You have to go through the sessions, understand it, and then uh, as it helps. right? So item, why is items not here? Because you have to use it either in any of the models because you're using backers. This has been told in the last year. So association we have mentioned they are in the secondary variable. But yes. that is in small letter, so that won't cause any issue over this. No, this is that's what I said, right? You have to mention the table name. Class name is association. What will be the table name? Oh. Table name. Table name meaning here. So see this item and material. What is the table name? All oh, small. Ultimately convert in small. Yes. So when you create this new class, uh, the syntax of creating a class, I mean. Uh, this is a convention that you put a class name as uh, uppercase, yes. right? Capital. Yeah. But uh, when it goes on to creating the table in database, it will take the same mm. name, but with all lowercase, which is mm. intuitive because in DBMS, we have seen that the table names are generally all lowercase. Okay, so got it. Right? So in the secondary, we'll provide the table name. So you see here also, what are we providing? Table name dot ID. Yes. Okay, this is many to many relationship. Okay, I have given a very good session previously. You should have watched that, but okay, fine. So in that session, I'll share the link. In that session, I have not only made use of it, but we have also seen the using this using CLI also. All right, so I'll share the link, go through it, and maybe you'll understand the difference between one to many and many to many. Okay, is this clear till now? Yes. Sir. Sanjali, yes, sir. is this clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, you'll be so understood. Code. Yeah, yeah. So you I just should. tell me the uh, when did you discuss? I will uh, search it by myself. Uh, okay, just give me a minute. Uh, okay, so this is what I wanted to give today. I'll stop sharing and I'll share the link. Give me a minute. I'll give you the links. Let me check if it is added. If it is not added, then it will be. Yeah, it is there. Okay, so this playlist refer to week five activity practice session, week five open session, and this week five extra session. Okay, these are the three sessions where we discussed SQL Alchemy, sorry, Flask SQL Alchemy from the scratch right from the point we are creating files virtual environment integration and everything okay all right so any other query regarding this uh, models okay now your task would be to do the same thing i mean extend whatever we have created today to item part crud for items all right if there is any doubt, share the code in session also because this is not graded. So you can share your code anytime on the session and we'll see what can be done. Okay. Okay. 
So tomorrow's okay, open session will be on the sixth week. Yes, tomorrow's open session will be on week six. Uh, we'll try to understand what Flask RESTful is. Okay. Yeah, what so I have gone is. through the week six content will be easy to follow. Yeah, just have a look at it. I mean, briefly mm -hmm. go through it. Maybe get the screencast and all. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, even if you did not go to any content, that is exhaustive by itself. I mean, it will at least give you the sense of what APIs are. We might not be able to cover entire Flask RESTful, but I'll give you the basics. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, in this in this in this application, we have seen that we are retrieving data from one single table only. So what if we have mm -hmm. to uh, use the joining thing and any other SQL parser? So is that possible? This is where relations come into picture, right? So okay. we, we, I mean, when you, so this is about material. When you go into items or let's mm -hmm. say I want to see all the items that are there for a particular material, what will I use? Okay, let me share once again. I'll show you. Okay, very quickly I'll show you that. Okay, so let this okay. many to many be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'll do, uh, I hope you can see the screen. Yes, sir. All right, so when you see that this rubber for now, mm -hmm. what if I want mm -hmm. to, uh, in the application, I want to click on rubber and it should take me or it should give uh, take me to the page that shows all the uh, items created by rubber okay right so how do we do that this is i mean this is so something that would require joins but we will re need relationships yes. we will get to all the uh, from association table no, association table is not there in the picture this uses this one to many model Okay, so this is where we'll make use of these attributes that we have created. Material dot items. Okay, then we have to pass items over there, right, sir? Yes. In the query. Right. So what you will do is, uh, okay, let me write, write the controller. You em embed this controller to HTML, okay? okay. So I'll write app dot route hmm. slash, oh, sorry, slash all underscore items okay but these items are of particular material so do i need to provide okay. the primary key of that material, material yes sir. right i need to provide so i will yeah. do int colon id okay. angle slash right yeah then i'll write the uh, function so i'll simply Four write function. i'll write item underscore for underscore material okay mm -hmm. what will i have to pass on here id id okay. then i'll retrieve that particular material how will i retrieve okay i have to create a variable then a single query material Make dot query query dot, dot get get right yeah. and what will you and how will you get it ID. With id okay now you will return or simply i'll return what will i return now i want to get all the items for this material what will i what will i return this material yeah, this material dot item yes this material dot items dot items items where is this coming from this is coming from this that extra that attribute relation. that we have created relationship yeah Right. So I the join is what is this? Last session you have discussed about that, but yes, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, I've written the endpoint. Now you make sure you return it right into the HTML page and also embed the link in this way. Okay. Okay. Sir. Right. So you get the material, and what are you doing now? You are joining material and uh, items table to get items. the items of that particular material. Okay. Okay. That's what the join in SQL, uh, join in uh, SQL is what is relationship and things here. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so yeah, where have I was? I hope you get this. Okay. Extend on to this, yes. I'll share the code. 
okay so i'll stop sharing now okay let us not uh, unnecessary overload ourselves go through this session once again and uh, maybe it will help you to get an idea of connection okay so then you can then extend it to the item part cred for items all right okay then if there are uh, is there any doubt yeah. so thank yes, you so much sir thank you sir i have a doubt thank you so much. okay yeah so okay. those who have, do not have doubt those who uh, i mean those who are okay with it can drop the session no issues with that thanks thanks for joining yes sanjali go ahead so like in the project uh, in the app project uh we have to like uh, uh, make a list of the songs uh, but the uh, the person who will take the viva uh, will uh, search which type of songs like every song in the universe or the no 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 not like that uh see it's it's like uh, i mean for now what did i do i created materials right i am created materials whichever i wanted not all materials right yes. similarly the user will ask you to create any song okay that song will be there in the database then the uh, sorry the examiner will ask you to add a song as a user as a creator okay okay the examiner will ask you to log in as creator or register as creator then he will ask you to add a song okay once the song is added to verify whether that song is coming in the search functionality he might ask you to uh, make search for the same song right if it comes up then what does that mean your search functionality is working fine yes sir right so we are not uh, i mean we are not going into checking if every song is there the functionality has to be tested right okay okay so if i try to search for a song which is there in the database it will give me the result if i search for a song that is not there it should show though no search found which is right in both cases okay right searching mean does not mean that i'll search for something and it should give we are not creating a search engine we are creating a application if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there you getting now yes sir okay okay give it a try then we'll see okay okay then we'll close it here thank you sir for the session